Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Motivation, the show where we dive headfirst into the minds of the most amazing individuals. And today I have this guest, the most, one of the most, and probably the most amazing individual that I have come across. His accolades are unbelievable from a doctorate in comparative religion to another doctorate in leadership. It gives me great pleasure to honor the great Dr. David Mwalopo. Mo, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. Looking forward to this discussion that hopefully will inspire and encourage some of our viewers. It's an unbelievable honor to be with you. And I wish the viewers could actually get a sense of the presence that you bring to, this, to the stage that we are here. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. David. You Dr. Can. David, I want to know something. I know that you've been through a lot when it comes to apartheid, when it comes to going through a lot of things in your life. How is it possible that you are such a positive person? You've dealt with the death of a child. You've dealt with a broken relationship. You've dealt being in prison when you were 13 years old. And yet you sit before me, a smile on your face, inspiring me in ways that I have never been inspired before. How do you do this? Well, first of all, you need to understand that uh, life is filled with choices, not chances. Every morning when we wake up, the Creator gives us an opportunity to choose. To choose to be positive or to choose to be negative. The challenge is when you become negative, you become cynical. And when you are cynical, you paralyze all kinds of positive action. So the, number th the first thing that you need to do is your decisions. Because remember, your decisions will determine your destiny. Whatever situation, difficult situation that you're facing, tough time that you're facing, the first decision is, I need to have a positive outlook on life. You don't need outside motivation. You need intrinsic motivation, which is motivation from inside. So that's number one. But number two, you need to surround yourself with people who are positive, people who inspire you, encourage you. Later on, when we talk about what we're doing in the community, oh man, mm. there's some awesome people doing wonderful work there. So you might be down, maybe depressed, but when you go to the community to see what other people are doing, it encourages you. And number three, for me at this stage in my life, it's all about leaving a legacy, doing for the next generation. So those three things keep me going. Look, David, it's so easy to sit here and listen to you because you are such an inspiring person, right? But the viewers are going through a lot. Social media has brought a lot of attention to many things such as depression, anxiety, and you see people struggling going along. The suicide rate is very high. Uh, people are going through a tough time financially, emotionally, physically. People are going through a very tough time. What is your one piece of advice in the morning when you wake up? What is that ritual that you follow that allows you to bring this positivity? Is it gratitude? Is it uh, looking forward to the day? Is it setting goals? What are you looking for in the day when you wake up in the morning and you say to yourself, right, I'm going out there. I'm attacking this day to the fullest, to the fullest positivity, whether there's load shedding or whether there's anything going on. I want to know what do you do to get this energy flowing through you and that you pass on to those around you. You can feel it when you are with you. Well, it's what is called self-motivation, which is why <laughs> you program here. Motivation means motive for action. Because as an individual, when you understand your assignment, your assignment is not to impress people, but to impact people. Your assignment is to do the best that you can by giving, by serving, even in difficult times. Remember, life is filled with seasons because winter cannot be every, winter is only a season. Winter is not a year. So some of your viewers today might be going through winter of winter, <coughs> six hours of load shedding. Hey, bro, it's a lot, you know? Some of you may be a winter in their relationship, in their marriage, winter of a child, you've graduated, Unemployed graduate, winter of a child, you need to go to university, there's no NS fast money. Winter of a season, you are coming from a broken home. So all of us go winters of seasons, but it is up to you to remind yourself that wait a minute, I was born to do something. And because I was born to do something, you start with motivating yourself, motive for action. And then the second thing is you approve yourself. Because remember, unless you approve yourself, you can never improve yourself to add value to other people. You approve yourself with all your limitations, with all what you have done. I mean, I remember at the age of 13, 13 years old, I mean, more be. I, I used to smuggle guns to kill white people, but you know, <laughs> I was a comrade that time, you know. But 13 years old, one, three, you're in prison for three months, demotivated, demoralized, beaten by the apartheid government. What do you do? Where, where do you see your life going from there? I mean, you're 13 years old, sitting in prison, no future ahead of you. 
How do you then get yourself motivated? Well, I, I, I must confess that that's why I know what it is to, to be sad, as to, be, to have stress, anxiety, and depression. But for me, it was this supernatural encounter I had in prison. Where said, Wait a minute. I'm born to do something. Again, when that aha moment come up to say, wait a minute, this is not how my life is going to end up. There must be more to life. And that's where the concept of I can came through. I see and I can. And that changed my life. I have an imagination, an ideal. See, I must be committed to this imagination, ideal, or a dream. A, I must assume responsibility. Yeah, but I'm in prison. The end, never give up. It's a matter of time. Because no difficult chapter in your life is permanent. None. All of them have an expiry date. So for me in prison, that aha moment changed. And then when I can was born, changed my life in my mind. Remember, three things are key. You visualize, you verbalize, and things materialize. So what did I do? I begin to visualize. I looked at myself the way I could become. At the age of 13, I started seeing myself having a PhD, making a difference in the lives of people, inspiring people, traveling. Remember, it's free. So when you dream, why do you dream small? Thoughts become things, right? Correct. Thoughts because you must dream big, because dreaming big is free of charge. Don't those thoughts become things? So you begin to visualize because what you visualize is not enough. You need to verbalize the power of words. Remember the miracle of our lives in, in the words, the paradigm shift, the words, the words you speak. I can do this. I'm going to do this. There is something about self-affirmation that will make things to go the third way. You visualize, you verbalize, and it materializes. When I was released from prison, the first thing I wanted to do was to gain more knowledge, and the rest is history. That is an absolutely incredible, inspiring story. I want to know those watching saying, okay, at 13 years old, I didn't get my aha moment. I'm 40 years old now, I'm 50 years old now, but I still don't feel like I know what my purpose is. And maybe this is what's creating that hole. I have the finances, I have a good job, I have my family around me, but I still feel empty inside. What is this hole inside? Is there an age limit on the aha moment? Do you need to go and seek out your aha moment? Or is it something that just comes to you? Do you need to learn? Do you need to read? Do you need to start self-intro prospecting, what I call it, finding gold within yourself? Or is it something that just appears because of some adversity that you were put through? Before I answer that question, let's be clear that there are a lot of things that are dream busters. And maybe some of the people are suffering from them. Dream buster number one is your yesterday. Your yesterday, I have done this yesterday because I have failed means I'm a failure. Dangerous. Because never allow your past to kidnap your future. You might have failed yesterday, but the positive aspect of it, there are some new things that now you know what to do and not what to do. So your yesterday can be an impediment. Number two, it may be jealousy. You're focusing so much on other people's success instead of focusing on your own self. Number three, you compare yourself to other people. I call it comparisonitis, <laughs> comparing yourself to other people. I'll never ever be like a mo, okay? You are tall, I am, you don't say uh, short. I'm vertically challenged, you know? <laughs> so I cannot compare myself to you. Right. And then thinking you are a failure because you have a failed marriage, a failed relationship. I'm young, I'm old. No, 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 remember, failure is not a person. It's just an event. I repeat, failure is not a person. It's, a, it's just an event. You made some bad decisions, you know. Some of you, you woke up, looked at your spouse and said to the Lord, is there a refund here, you know. <laughs> you, you don't give up because of an event. You give it a shot. So what am I saying? Is some of those dream busters, I mentioned four. The fifth one, which to me is what is very, very key. The fifth one is to a point where you begin not to believe in yourself. You need to learn to believe in yourself. So whether you are young or whether you're old, you can always start fresh. Today, looking at this program, you can start fresh. In one of my books I write, I said that life is like a coin. You may use it any way you wish, but you can only use it one time. As long as you can breathe, as long as you have life, you can always maximize life. Moses started at age 80. Sam was started at a young age. Age has nothing to do with your purpose. You can maximize your purpose wherever you are. You can start today watching this program and say, you know what, in a how moment, what is it that I like? What is it that I am passionate about? When I came back from exile, couldn't find a job. You talk about depression. Two PhDs couldn't find a job. And PhD does not mean passing high school with difficulties. <laughs> and I'm talking about, I study. I've been a maths teacher, couldn't find a job. The Department of Education said, don't call us, we'll call you. 
more I'm still waiting even today. Jeez. But what do you do? I'm talking, I'm answering you. What do you do? You can either suffer from self-pity and do nothing about your life or say, you know what? Let me rather maybe forget about my challenges. Let me go serve someone. Let me go give of myself. Let me do something. That's what I did. I started I Can Foundation with nothing. Guess, guess, guess where did I go to? To the schools, <laughs> to inspiring the young people there. This, this is incredible. And you know what? I wish we didn't have to stop, but we do. We're going to take a short air break. But when we come back, Dr. David is inspiring me. I hope you are feeling just as inspired. This is unbelievable. See you after the break. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Dr. David is inspiring us in ways that we have never been inspired before. Dr. David, before we entered the break, we spoke about ways that people can inspire themselves, sure. ways that people can find this motivation every single day when they wake up. I want to know, does adversity show you your pathway in life? So I've heard something somewhere before that through adversity, you can find creativity. The toughest things that, have, that you have been through means that you have actually grown from them. Correct. You can use that to teach someone else. Yes. And is that true? Do you actually believe that if you go through some sort of adversity and it was probably the toughest thing that you have been through in your life and now you see other people struggling through it, is it something that we can find our purpose through that? Do you think that purpose can be found through that? You know, and I say yes, because remember in life, it is not what is happening to you more that counts. Things will come to you. It is not what is happening to you that counts. It is how you respond. That is important. It's not what's happening to you that counts, or what's happening in you that counts. You know, I always you, tell my son, it's yes. not your situation that defines you. However, yes. it's your reaction to That's the situation it. that defines you. But most you. of the time when we have adversity, most of us, what we do, instead of being proactive, we become reactive. And the danger is when you become reactive, it paralyzes you. You become inactive and end up becoming radioactive. You become poisonous <laughs> to yourself. Yes. So for me, I would like to encourage someone watching. When I had adversities, losing off a loved one, a relationship, businesses, whatever, there are a couple of things that you need to watch. I like to use that acronym, W-A-T-C-H. W, watch your words. As you find that purpose, begin to now be concerned about the words that come out of your mouth. You speak about the importance of this a lot. I mean, a lot, the my reason friend. for it? Simply because there is power in words. Yes. I mean, if somebody is in the hospital, they are sick. You know, you don't go up there and say, Chief, ah, through God, you are gone. When are you are gone. <laughs> you don't say things like that. You find appropriate words because you're speaking to the spirit person to say you will be well. There is something about the power of a spoken words because out of the abundance of the heart, you speak positivity into a person. It changes the situation. But the letter in the acronym WATCH is your attitude. In adversity, watch your attitude. Adversity can make you bitter or they can make you better. For some of us, when I was the first black director of Dimension Data, listed in London, making a lot of money, giving to the community, but the dot-coms became dot-bombs. Stock market crashed. It moved from 95, 75, 50, 25, 10, 4. Lost a lot of money. It can paralyze you. But again, your attitude, it is not that it's happening to you that counts. It have maintain a positive attitude in the middle of a storm. Here's what I, I, I say when, when, when you call my phone. It says, some storms, some adversities, some storms are not there to disrupt your life. Some storms, some adversities are there to clear the path. Therefore, don't calm the storm. Calm yourself because the storm will pass. It's a positive attitude. So it's your words. It's your attitude. The letter T, your thoughts. In difficult times, when you're faced with adversities, watch this. You are good in that because your words can become your thoughts. If you've got negative thinking, this has destroyed a lot of people. I'm HIV positive. I've got COVID. I've got this. I've got cancer. You know how many people die because of negative thinking? Your thoughts are powerful. Then the letter C is the company you keep. In adversity, I have found out that you will notice three people. Adversity will reveal three kinds of people. Friends of the past, friends of the present, and friends of the future. For me, during adversity, the company I kept, I realized in my life I had to say bye-bye to certain people, the friends of the past. They always remind you of the past. But I just told you, do not allow the past to kidnap your future because you are no longer a prisoner of the past. You're part of the future. You, you can't change the past. The past is a point of reference, not a place of residence. 
It's there, it happened, you can learn from it. So in adversity, watch the company you keep. People talk about the past, say bye-bye to them. You're not better than them, you say bye-bye to them because you need to focus on the future. But the most dangerous people in adversity is the company you keep of the present friends. Because I have learned, Mo, that not everyone who is with you is for you. I repeat, not everyone who's with you is for you. When you go through difficult times, you're faced with adversity. The second kind of friend, the friends of the present, I realized some of them are your friends with conditions. They like you, they love you as long as they use you, they manipulate you. So in adversity, watch your words, your attitude, your thoughts. The company you need to keep are the friends of the future. These are people who believe in you, even if you don't believe in yourself. These are people who add into your life. They multiply your life. These are people who will speak well of you, even in your absence. You don't say anything like that about more. He's my chum, he's my buddy. Um, for it. <laughs> and the later age in adversity, watch your heart. As long as you, God has given you the ability to breathe, your heart is pumping. Never, ever give up hope. Yes, you may fall, but when you fall, don't fall on your face. When you fall, fall on your back. Because when you fall on your back, you can look up. When you can look up, you can get up. Oh, I know that saying. Oh, and I yes. know you that know saying there, well. Yeah. And that Correct. is an unbelievable gentleman, Les Brown as well, oh, who I'm always man. talks about that as well. Yes. And, 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 and I believe in that because in this life, there are afflictions, there are challenges, there are adversities. But I've also learned that tough times don't last, my friend. Tough people do. I'm a living testimony of that. Oh, that is a beautiful acronym. Yes. So watch yes. everything that you do. Yes. W-A-T-C-H. Just want to go back to the C there. Yes. The company that you keep. Correct. Friends of the past, friends of the present, and of course, friends of the future. Correct. How do you get rid of friends of the present without feeling that guilt inside that this is going to take you to go forward. A lot of people are struggling with that. Yes. A lot of people know that people around them are toxic, but they are so bound to them out of guilt. Yes. Whether it's from childhood trauma or whatever it may be that have led them to feel this way, how do they then get out of that? If they know that these people are not good for them, they are holding them back, they do not want to see them go forward. What do you do as an individual? Well, it's, it's the most difficult one because, you know, we love people. But at the end of the day, this is the only time in life where I want to encourage people, you need to be selfish with your life. There's a teaching I, te I, 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 I do in corporates, even with leaders, about the importance of self-care. I used to be the chairman of South African Airways, handling the whole transformation process. When you're in the plane, Mo, there's turbulence. The mask will fall off. What do they say? They say when the mask fall, put the mask on yourself first then you can be able to help other people. A lot of people today have dreams that have become nightmares, have books that they're supposed to have written. There's money that they're supposed to make to be a blessing to the communities, but they're stuck in toxic and poisonous relationship because they don't want to detach. It's an individual decision. You've got to be intentional in it. In a humble spirit, this relationship is not working. We are not going anywhere. You need to be real. I call it the hot session, H-O-T. The honest, open, transparent session. Is it easy? Most difficult thing. Let me give an example. Wow. A young man who's my right-hand man, Abna Mariri, Dr. Abna Mariri. We struggled together, left this country together. Ended up becoming a famous star in the United States. Came back. We make a lot of money, made a lot of difference. And in my business, in my organization, Apna Mariri, unfortunately deviated, got involved in drugs. More for 10 years, I struggled to let him go. This is a body of mine, man. This is my friend. But he's taking the organization down. He's taking our branding down, whatever. Mm. But there is a time when I realize this thing, and I'm going to say to you, sometimes as a leader, as a person, for you to detach, you need to do this. Sometimes you need to do the right things, not the easy things. Easy is to pretend you love them, even if you know you're not going anywhere. But the right thing is to come to that hot moment. I gotta be honest, open, and transparent. This marriage is not going anywhere. We are hurting each other. My son, every time you're in trouble, I've got to get you out of prison. This time, you're gonna spend a couple of days in prison. 
It's an honest, open, transparent session where it's about your life. You can't just give, give, give all the time because if your car battery is dead, how can you jumpstart me? There is a time in your life you need to be selfish and realize this assignment that I'm supposed to do here, you are delaying my success. You are delaying what I need to do. That way I need to back off in a humble way because there are certain mm -hmm. things in life when you go to the next level, not everyone is going to go there with you. Not that you're better than them. It's just you need to part ways at some time. And when I did that, Best decision that I'd ever done for him. He yes, went to doors rehab. Open up. Yes, doors open up. Same Abna Mariri went through rehab. And the good news, here's the good news. He's back into my life. Seven years later, he's clean. Uh, and guess what? He now wrote a book on the door. That there is a time sometimes you need to allow other people to go through the door. So that's what I'm saying. You can't keep people in there. There is a time when you need to release the people so that you can be able to focus on their future. Sometimes you need to let, you release yourself because you more may be a hindrance to other people. So you need to come to a point to say, David, the relationship that I have with you is toxic. So you need to say, you know what? I see greatness in you. I'm releasing you, go your way. Some of the people are waiting for that, but I have learned in life, if they do not have that revelation, I just need to go say bye-bye. Thought scenes, bye-bye, via God, because I got a life to live. Don't you think that the ego is what blocks them off? Yes, and you know what ego means? It means you exalt yourself only. Ego means you exalt yourself only. Or you edge people out. Ego is that, you know, I know everything. No, no, no. Humility means I must get my pride. I must get my ego out. Wow. This, uh, the conversation of ego is something that really, I think a lot of people struggle with because they themselves don't know yes. that they are blocked by their ego or they're being blocked by someone else's ego. It is something that's a community problem that leads into a, a countrywide problem that leads into a worldwide problem. And I want, to I want to dive into the ego problem after the break, right? I really hope that this is inspiring you. Those messages are really truly unbelievable. And I hope you can take out at least one thing from here that will guide you. This show is going to end this week, but join us next week when we get to part two with Dr. David as we dive deep into what the ego is and deep into what the mind actually does to you as an individual, be it in a positive way or be it in a negative way. This is motivation and let me motivate you. <laughs>